Hello, my name is Paul Mazzandi. I'm Vice President of the Brantford Brant Chamber of Commerce and your host for this series of fireside chats with the federal candidates. Today we're joined by Carly Sordas of the Green Party of Canada. And this series is the beginning of the 2021-2022 Chamber TV series uh, that looks to investigate the Brantford business community and what's best for that Brantford business community. So I want to start by saying thank you, Carly. Really appreciate you coming in. Thank you for having me. What a pleasure. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's excellent to, to get to meet you. Uh, I know we didn't have an opportunity in debate. Mm -hmm. So I really, uh, really look forward to, to getting to know you a little bit better. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I know that you're, you're quite involved in a lot of local initiatives, uh, some of them the, the Brantford period pop-up, SPAC. Uh, what's it been like? What are the some of the rewarding takeaways working with a lot of these local initiatives? Yeah, for me, the biggest takeaway is building the connection and building our community connection. I um, have a business, Cars Natural Creation, where I try and use the business to connect with our community and see what needs we need and what we need more of. And so connecting with the P Brantford period pop-up has been an amazing eye-opener to men's store products that are needed in the community. SPAC is the Environment Sustainability Policy Advisory Committee. And the biggest takeaway from that is understanding the policies that are needed to put in place. Being um, young and stepping up into more of a municipality role with making policies, you see the, a lot of legwork that goes on behind the scenes. So being able to communicate these policies with our community is very rewarding. So everything that I work on and all of my community initiatives are different ways that I can help support our community or at least understand what more needs to be done and how we can head to that direction. Excellent. Yeah, it's fun. So the, the leap then to the role of a federal election candidate is, is not one to be taken lightly for sure. Yeah. Uh, given the responsibility of representing a, a riding that's, that's so diverse, there's over 160,000 people in this riding, uh, people in, in urban settings like Brentford and Paris and, and some of the communities in county. You've got a lot of rural uh, people in this riding, as well as the, the Six Nations and the Mississaugas of the First Credit that you're representing. Uh, what motivated you to run and why now and, and why the Green Party? Yeah, and the Green Party is aligned with my values, especially this year when we have been opening up a lot of information from residential schools and a lot of reconciliation that needs should have happened a long time ago that we need a lot of work on. The Green Party is very passionate to build a nation-to-nation -nation relationship mm -hmm. so that we can support our Indigenous community. And I see as well, um, I just chatting with my um, Indigenous friends, it's a bit ironic um, for them to jump in into a federal election to vote. So we need a government that they're going to trust right. and that, that they're going to believe in. Mm -hmm. Especially in a rural community, we forget about how important our farmers are and how much agriculture uh, really helps um, support our economy and really stimulates our financial income for, for Canada. So it, uh, I love Brantford Brant. We seem like we're a small community. But like you said, we're very diverse. We have um, the Six Nations Reserve. We've got Burford, we've got Oakville, Oak, Oakland, we've got Brantford, St. George, Paris. It's a very diverse community that, that needs a lot of support at the green level. The Greens, um, something that's really cool that I believe in and what is nice that our expert um, economic believe in as well is that renewable energy as well as figuring out how we can retrofit with renewable energy and reusable energy to really stimulate our economy. There's um, been a lot of research done that um, the economics really believe that renewable energy and greens are our future and that's the most boldest and strongest way that we can really um, regenerate our economy after the post pandemic. That, that's an interesting point because I think a lot of people hear the Green Party and then automatically they think they're, they're a single policy platform where it's, it's environmental sustainability, climate change, and they don't really give the Green Party much opportunity to speak on things like the economy or economic recovery. So uh, you yourself identify that you're a business owner. Uh, yeah. What sort of things would, would your party's platform or, or your representation do to, to speak? 
to the economic recovery from this pandemic we're in? Yeah, right now with the Liberals um, involved, they are starting to reduce the Canadian emergency wage subsidy as well as the Canadian emergency rent subsidy before this pandemic has been over. We haven't fully opened up our economy yet. So we still believe that our small businesses need this support. And we wanna make sure that we only hold up to 9% tax on our small businesses. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, even though fingers crossed, we're getting to the tail end of the pandemic, but um, we are still in the midst or even at the tail end where our small businesses still need support. So we're planning to implement that or continue with um, these Canadian, um, the wage subsidies as well as the rent subsidies. Right, right. So the, the rent subsidies themselves are, are always something that many people rely on uh, during this time. We've, we've got a, a housing crisis happening nationally, but it, the, the pressure is felt very acutely in town here. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on the current housing crisis and, and how that that could be addressed. Yeah, right now we do have um, a housing crisis and I can also speak to that with my generation. It's, um, it's, it's hard to find a house, it's hard to jump into this market, say what it was even 15, 20 years ago. Right now um, we need to really focus on our housing situation. We have a lot of empty housing that need to be filled first. So we wanna implement a national housing first policy and a lot of our community is also relying on CERB right now um, to help stimulate our economy with job losses and, and lots of jobs, um, a lot of individuals not being able to go back into the roles. We need to be able to support them. Um, there's um, a stat where it's 10% of Canadians, they're living in poverty right now. So we believe if we implement um, a guaranteed liv livable income, where we can um, implement CERB, but into this living income for individuals. That way we can re-stimulate the economy. Um, and this idea comes from something else um, from Henry Ford, the founder of um, Ford uh, Vehicles. And when he opened up his, um, his plant, he basically said, I need to pay my factory workers twice as much because they're the ones that can't afford my cars. So if they can afford my cars, they're going to buy my cars and then now my business is going to boom. And so right now with job loss and our affordability and just infl inflation costs, we aren't able to buy these goods that we work for. So we want to implement a guaranteed livable income so that we can have a fair society. We can um, make sure that this is also part of the missing and murdered Indigenous uh, women and girls. Um, calls to action is implementing guaranteed livable income. So we're also gonna be addressing some poverty, but also low incomes being able to afford um, what we all should be able to do in our economy just to live um, a genuine life. Yeah, living wages, uh, the struggles of, of low businesses at, at getting employees, that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, what do you what do you think the, the, the two or three biggest uh, challenges the the business community is is facing coming out of this pandemic right now yeah i feel like we are facing um, a lot of fear related to the vaccinations for small businesses especially restaurants and and new policies that are being implemented uh, days before an election i also think the rent subsidies are really important but also this guaranteed livable income so that they they can have uh, people come in from our community and have money to spend and not just trying to recover from what we've lost through the pandemic. Mm. So there are some important things. And, and how would you see that those issues to the business community differ or maybe they're the same as, as individual residents? So do you see different challenges for the business community than for individual private citizens? Yeah, I see the, the businesses have to have a little bit more of a push in trying to create more inventive ideas. We need to be innovative with our new future and see where we can save some money and see where we can invest into more renewable resources that we're not going to have to continue to put out day in and day out. Whereas individuals, we need to really focus on how we can be a part of our economy and be a part of our community. Mm -hmm. So across, uh, across the, the community here, if you're driving around, you see a lot of help wanted signs and windows. You see mm -hmm. a lot of ads in newspapers seeking uh, new, new employees. Uh, 
and uh, a visit, as, as you were saying, uh, to any restaurant this summer. Uh, usually you have to allow more time uh, to, to be seated, to get your meal and everything, because quite frankly, these employees have been uh, either uh, on, on, on furlough or, or not working, and the, these communities have had a lot of trouble with, uh, with the uh, hospitality sector in, in particular. Uh, but just generally speaking, many employers are short-staffed. Uh, what do you think is the next step in, in getting people back to work and how do we accomplish that quickly? How do we get more people into, into jobs that are paying that, that living wage? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need to um, be able to advertise it and be able to make sure that the individuals know that working is good for us, especially for mental health, our physical health, and emotional health. So working is phenomenal, but we really need to be able to transition those on CERB back into our economy. And right now, I feel like um, there's a lot of fear that's going around in our community with our um, with the reopening. Um, and I know businesses are taking so much time just to try and implement different policies. I, um, I work at a physiotherapy clinic and we have, I'm a physiotherapy assistant, and we have a lot of clients that just aren't ready to come back yet. Right. There's a lot of fear, there's just a lot of unknown as to what's going on right now in the world. And that's where I still speak as we're, we're still in this pandemic because we're seeing the shortages. We're seeing those not wanting to go back to work because they, they They've been laid off again. So what I think we really need is to have our economy open, provide education and how we can really boost our own immune system by natural foods and physical health. And this is all as part of the Green Party platform and really open our economy without making things mandatory like vaccinations for people to go in and out of buildings, but making sure that we're putting our, um, our health first, but also implementing what we've been doing this whole pandemic, making sure that our science is non-negotiable, that we're following our guidelines that are being set out, but also make sure that people are able to go back into our economy. So I think right now it's a, it's a touchy question to answer sure. because we, I'm seeing it at my workplace as well, and we're trying everything that we can. And I think we just need a change in our economy, knowing that we are gonna keep things open. There's not gonna be that unknown or fear that we're gonna close down again, but how are we gonna keep Canadians safe mm -hmm. um, that are vaccinated or unvaccinated? We don't wanna create this uh, two-tiered society that we're experiencing right now, especially when we're trying to implement these ideas that not too many people are okay with, but also making sure we're all safe. And right. I think that's everyone's first, um, first thought is, okay, is this safe or is this not safe? Right. So how can we make this work together to keep businesses open and get people back out working? Do you feel like the, the messaging that's coming out from public health or provincial or federal jurisdictions have been confusing on whether something's safe or not? Yeah, um, I think that the trust isn't there. Um, we have our people of color, we have the indigenous community that don't trust our government and our government hasn't been able to implement things that they're looking for like the 94th Truth, Truth, of Recon Truth and Reconciliation Acts and, and all these different things need to be put first before these communities can trust our government and know that science is there, the vaccine is, is the education's there and the research is, has been done. Um, how can we produce more knowledge and provide more education to our communities and to our people so that we can make sure that our whole community is safe? So I think um, we just need to um, do more. We need to, instead of just talk the talk, we need to walk the walk and put into these, put these policies into action and build this nation to nation relationship. Mm -hmm. And then we can both say, okay, we are making the right decisions. We're not just holding it to those who have uh, put us in the wrong direction in the past. Right. So on, on the subject of, of public health, uh, healthy people and healthy communities create for a healthy economy. Uh, mm. Something that Brantford uh, specifically has, has experienced over the past couple of years and one of the key things that the Chamber of Commerce has sort of focused in on is the opioid epidemic. Uh, there are, are many people struggling with addiction. There are many people uh, in our community uh, that are, are this, is, this is their life, they're, they're struggling. It's a life and struggle with them. Uh, what, 
what steps uh, would would you take to to try and address the the local opioid epidemic as well as the the more national opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is huge, and then to, uh, to the Green Party, this is a crisis, and I'm proud to be representing the Green Party and realizing that this is a public health crisis, and this isn't something for people to be criminalized about. Mm -hmm. We need to really take action and and get help as soon as we can. And the Green Party's plan is to decriminalize the usage of, of, um, opioid, of the opioid crisis, but also being able to implement a national safe supply program. And that way we can have professionals, we can have health experts really help um, educate and administer and help wean off um, the, the opioid crisis. And I see the huge effect as well in hospitals. We can overwhelm our hospitals with overdoses. We are also um, dealing with people. Each person that dies from an opioid crisis is a person and is a person that needed help that the system wasn't able to give them. So how can we we change our system because the system's not working right now. It continues to get worse, especially in Brantford, Brantford Brant. And so I want to see um, a future where we can decriminalize opiates and then as well as being able to implement a safe supply program where we can have this as more of a regulated uh, field. We know that it's happening. We've tried to um, to criminalize this for so long and it's not working. So we need to take different uh, steps from other countries as to how they decriminalize drugs and have really been successful with it in helping the community. And then that way as well, we can really help those who are living in poverty. It goes hand in hand with poverty as well as, well as mental health, as well as housing affordability. If we can provide individuals with safe housing, mental health resources, and being able to, to help them with the opioid crisis instead of treating them like a criminal, I think we're gonna build a, a greener future and as well as get this economy going in a full community and not just those who are able to work right now. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, uh, Brentford Council has enacted a downtown task force, and the, the chamber is represented on it. Uh, we've asked uh, Will Baum's office to be on it, uh, many different uh, community liaison partners, uh, and we've invited Phil Coleman in, in his uh, capacity as a, the federal MP. Uh, and so we've asked that the, the elected candidate in this, um, in this riding also be part of that uh, task force moving forward. Mm -hmm. Is that something you could see yourself dedicating time towards? Oh, absolutely. And I see it being a huge um, forefront in Brantford right now. It was brought up in the debate. It is a question that I've been asked by um, members in our community just canvassing for the Green Party. But when I see that it's important to the community, then something that I want to step in, be able to help out with and be able to um, educate and provide that information so i'd love to to be part of the task force if i elected in brantford brant for Excellent. sure that's no that's great to hear um you did mention in in the context of of the opioid crisis uh, a, a lot of a lot of people who are struggling with uh with opioid there's also a correlation with uh struggling to find adequate housing solutions mm -hmm. our, our our community specifically here in, in brantford brant is is uh, way undersupplied on adequate affordable housing opportunities and and this is a story that plays out over Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, uh, all, all over the place. Um, what does a Green Party uh, platform do to address specifically the housing crisis in our nation? Mm -hmm. So the housing crisis and it can be looked at a few different ways. Um, some people spend a lot of money on pharmacare. They spend more money on medication than they do for the housing. Mm. So one thing that we want to do as the Green Party is implement a universal pharmacare. And we may be able to see a lot of people um, use their money to be able to afford housing instead of other issues that we're trying to focus on for our health. As well as the guaranteed livable income that can be used for those in poverty to help them afford housing. But something a part of the Green Party platform they want to focus on housing first is buildings that are empty that they should be used first as well as focusing on community housing and more supportive housing in our community those are their first priorities for for the housing for those who are in poverty interesting so can you expand on the uh, on using the empty buildings first 
what does that look like? Yeah, um, so if there's buildings um, that are currently empty and they're being put up for rent, we want to implement tax associated with it. So then that way we're, we're focusing on using the housing that we have first. So it's more of a, a national strategy that we can have those buildings as housing first policy. Okay, yeah. interesting. Um, another key issue in, in our region is, uh, and, and nationally even, is declining birth rates. Uh, for whatever reason, people seem to be having less and less kids one generation to the next. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, even looking historically, Canada has always grown through immigration. Uh, what's, what's your party's plan towards immigration in Canada and how does that affect Brant for Brant locally? Yeah, um, so we believe um, Canada is a multicultural um, uh, um, nation. Yeah. Um, everybody um, who was not in our territory of Tur Turtle Island is a settler. So we know <laughs> that we are, we, we survive on immigration. We, yeah. And for our farming, our migrant workers are extremely important to us. And we need to make sure that there's no burden in the administrative cost for um, foreign temporary working program. Mm -hmm. So we do want to make sure that we can stimulate more um, migrant workers coming into our economy and into our nation, as well as making sure that we can um, have a just transition for immigrants to, to enter Canada and making sure that the jobs that we have here are, are needed first. So if somebody wants to, to um, immigrate over to Canada, we have lots of jobs that are open and focusing on those jobs first and how they can benefit our and be a part of our prosperous community. Do you see uh, federally funded infrastructure as part of that job creation plan? Yes, yes. So I know locally there's a, a lot of opportunity to uh, get into provincial infrastructure with, with the highway uh, and uh, maybe airports or another uh, provincial jurisdiction. Uh, what sort of federal infrastructure spending or, or cost sharing uh, what the Green Party consider doing to stimulate jobs and um, bring more workers in, uh, even even temporary foreign workers. Like what, what sort of things on the infrastructure side sort of strike your fancy? Mm -hmm. One of the main things, especially in, in the Ontario Chamber of Commerce as well as the Green Party that we have aligned, is that we really want to electrify our transport system. Mm -hmm. It is something that's really important, and it's been a, on our platform for a while now, and it's finally come to the forefront um, now that um, we are in a climate crisis. Right. So we need to become carbon neutral by 2050. Okay, so that's a little ways away, but it is coming up. 2020 came up really quick. Yeah. Now we're in 2021. Wow. So we're, we want to make sure that we can electrify our transport system by 2050, but also implement a coast to coast to coast a national um, grid program for renewable energy. So we want, we know that fossil fuels are in the past, we want to be innovative and, and use what we have with technology that's advanced so much over time to create um, renewable energy, 100% renewable energy across Canada and not just within Ontario as a province. Mm. Um, we want to make sure that each province has that. So the jobs that are available in a green platform is abundant. We have multiple jobs that are needed to transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy. So we have jobs that are going to be needed, um, whether they're coming from migrant workers or coming from those in our community or those who are working in the fossil fuel section. We can make it an easy just transition into renewable energy and make sure that that money is being used um, for other infrastructure as well, like our electri um, electrifying our transport system. Excellent. Uh, I I personally have my eyes set on electric vehicles as, as something that's really going to be a game changer here, but the infrastructure that goes along with that is is incredibly complex, uh, and then you have to look at at smart grids because you can't all be charging your car at the same mm -hmm. time. And then all of a sudden you have uh, all these vehicles on the road, and you have limited range without the proper infrastructure in place. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think we're at a really interesting time in history uh, when we start to see a whole new way of developing transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, and it's exciting to hear what, what the Green Party plan is. I think your, uh, your platform that was uh, just released last week mm -hmm. uh, is, is even calling uh, for uh, a net negative 
uh, carbon footprint by 2050. Yeah, so, we're ambitious and we're yeah, ready. <laughs> yeah. Our plan is, is bold and it's strong. And I believe um, over the last few years, we've really need, needed a champion in climate crisis. But how are we going to focus on our economy as well as focus on our climate? And I think um, there's this saying, if not now, then when? We are all speaking up about climate change. This is a whole world issue. So if not now, then when are we going to have the Green Party being represented as a majority government? Mm -hmm. Or when are we going to be able to elect more Green MPs to help hold it? Um, the House of Commons accountable for these decisions. So that's where I'm really passionate, just to make sure that we are getting this work done. The Green Party has a phenomenal platform that we can implement amazing, innovative green ideas that are gonna stimulate our economy. And it needs to be done now <laughs> before 2050. So we have these bold plans to show that we can do this. It's gonna be a big change. A lot of people are uncomfortable with change, yeah. but is it is a change that's needed and a change that we're gonna see a more just future, more greener economy and um, happier people just living our, in our environment. And I hope that for our community, I'm able to bring that into a federal level. That's what I'm passionate about. Yeah, I, I can tell you've got a lot of passion yeah. for this. And, uh, I, I think one of the challenges with a, a green economy is uh, businesses have this fear of how is this going to uh, be an inhibitor to my growth. Uh, just a, a, a minute left now. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a business owner who's uh, weary of these climate policies being uh, non-competitive for them? The climate plan that we have for small businesses and any businesses, it is smart. It is the time now to change into my business is green and I see where we can save a lot of silly costs, even just single use disposables. I know um, transitioning into paper straws for some businesses that was more expensive, right. but how can we make bigger steps to reduce the money, reduce the impact and invest into something that's gonna be more long-term? And um, just a quick one I talk about is our electric system where we have um, transport system with diesel buses versus electric buses cost more to run these deal buses long term than it does for these elect buses. So we need um, a, more of a cost input at the beginning is going to be more sustainable long term, especially yeah. for businesses. Yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Carly, we're, we're out of time. Uh, really great to meet you. Uh, glad we got a chance to do this. Thank um, you. Yeah, I just hope that uh, this session is helpful to the people of, of Brantford Brant, uh, the community businesses that, that are here, and that this is an opportunity to, to hear Carly and to, to get to know you and, and to know really what, what does a Green Party platform look like. Mm -hmm. We're out in the community um, up until the election running walks. We're going to be doing Excellent. cigarette butt cleanups as well just to really <laughs> show that we're in it for the long run and meet the candidate um, Zoom meetings as well online. So a lot of opportunities for the community to, to reach out and connect, uh, get to know yeah. me as a person and what we're doing in our community. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Carly. Really Thank you. great to meet you. Yeah, lovely. Thanks for having me.